Hey everybody, Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of a brand new series, Oxygen Not Included. Before I jump to the scenario settings, rules, and goals, I should explain what Oxygen Not Included is. You start off as little characters called duplicants in the center of an asteroid. This asteroid has a finite amount of resources that you will exploit to increase your technology levels and raise your survivability. You are able to ranch creatures and mine different biomes, constructing a little home for yourself with the end goal to create a space program or a giant monument to your own success. While playing Oxygen Not Included, you will face a great many challenges like resource scarcity and sickness and destruction from space, heat and entropy. And when you conquer all of these challenges, you can blast off to the stars. For this playthrough, it is not a tutorial series. I by no means am an expert of Oxygen Not Included. If you are unfamiliar with the game, this series should let you learn enough to survive for your own, but if you're an expert, there might be scant learning to be found. The scenario settings for here is a survival Terra world. The coordinates will not be shared because I have not explored them and I don't want them spoiled for myself. The rules are pretty straightforward, no save scumming. The map will not be revealed to me ahead of time. And this one, most important, I am not looking for cookie cutter solutions to any of the problems I might have. I realize that there are dozens if not hundreds of guides out there of things to build and solutions to be had and I am not looking for any of them. Not in feedback, not in comments. The goals of the series is the following. Either the home sweet home victory condition where we build a giant monument to our success, the great escape where we blast off to the deepest reaches of space, or just surviving for 75 episodes and possibly reassessing if I want to continue. All right, let's get started. So here we are at the start of Radamon Town. Let me give you a quick rundown. First things first, this is a totally random world that I have not yet explored. So its layout is unknown to me. Sure, there's no way for me to prove this, but uh, I guess you'll just have to believe me. The three characters at the start here are all patrons of mine. We have Sign Curve, who is our researcher, supplier, and suit wearer, who's squeamish, meaning no doctor, uh, interior decorator, ugly crier, blue artist. Then we have one who is many, the Builder Digger Operator, a uh, loud sleeper, so he'll have to sleep apart from everybody else, a uh, quick learner, uh, ugly crier, and balloon artist. And then, of course, Dennis Keith, a suit-wearing supplier, uh, duplicate, who's pacifist, caregiver, uh, vomiter, and balloon artist. A lot of the balloon artists, don't we? We have all three are balloon artists. Okay, well, um, right at the start here, I usually try to make space for uh, make space for a latrine because the worst thing you can do when you start off, in my opinion, is to start off with human waste everywhere. Uh, taking a look, it looks like we have a fair bit of fresh water here. Uh, we've got some of the slime biome leaking in here. That's good to know. Uh, so let's go ahead and decide to extend our default platform out by two. I'm also going to need to hit some metal ore. So, uh, this copper here would be good to hit. The only problem, of course, is it's, uh, sort of locking back a whole bunch of carbon dioxide, which will inevitably and eventually cause breathing issues. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that. So we're going to want a outhouse. I'm going to expand this to be a little bit larger. 
I think what I'm going to do is to put a ladder here for a floor to go below. Which means right here will be the start of the outhouse. And then after we get a very basic outhouse set up, I'm going to want to set up bedrooms. So the basic outhouse should include an outhouse and it should also include a wash basin. So what I'm going to be doing here is setting up a wash basin with a little bit of space to spare just so that things aren't cramped. Two wash basins here and two outhouses here. I'm also going to change the priority so that we work over here and work this section higher than everything else. I don't care about this ladder as much. Now I'm going to set up a pitcher pump. Set it up like this. This ladder will continue all the way down and I'll dig that one uh, section out. The wash basins, instead of being omnidirectional, I'm going to say wash your hands when you're exiting the bathroom by changing this set direction. And I'm also going to want a pneumatic door. The pneumatic door will allow us to designate this as a latrine. Uh, if you take a look at the room overlay, there are morale bonuses for completing these types of rooms. And a latrine gives you a little bit of a little bit of morale once you have it fully set up. So these wash basins, in order to work, are going to need access to water. And that water is going to come from this pitcher here. Additionally, I'm going to set up some storage bins. These aren't necessarily the most... Actually, no, I won't even put them there. I set up the storage bins here. get our latrine set up drunk. The outhouses have a certain amount of visits until they need to be plunged. Uh, needless to say, nobody likes to plunge it. They find it dreadful. All right, let's make sure that these storage bins get constructed promptly. I'm also gonna have to clean up all this sandstone that dropped into the water. Now another thing that's very important is that you protect your fresh water sources, making sure that there's no chance of uh, leaks or accidents that could contaminate it, because once it's contaminated, uh, it really can't be uncontaminated. So some ways to do that is to build a lip to make sure that spills can't spill over. Um, and we could do that uh, a little bit in the future when it's more precarious. I'm also going to leave this door on automatic open so we don't have to wait for the doors. But as you can see, the latrine bonus has been applied. All right, next up will be our bedrooms. Trying to get a little morale bonus for having comfortable beds. Now, generally speaking, in this game, um, oxygen is not necessarily easy to come by, and by that I mean early on you don't want to put your bedrooms, or at least in my experience, you don't want to put your bedrooms uh, low because they might, you know, be out of breath in the middle of the night. So I like to put my bedrooms uh, up top. One of, uh, one of our guys duh, is a loud sleeper, though. And because of the loud sleeper, um, we are going to need to have, like, separate bedrooms that are apart from one another. 
so that we don't disturb sleep. So I'm going to put one cot here. This is very temporary. Um, and then I'm going to put the other cots up here. Eventually, you're going to want uh, individual beds for everybody. As you can see here, uh, a barracks has a morale bonus of one. A bedroom has a morale bonus of two. Keeping everyone's morale up is going to be very important. So, making sure that the bedrooms that you build are, you know, as recuperative and comfortable as possible is, you know, sort of important. So, our loud sleeper was, I believe, one who is many. Yes. So one who is many is going to take this cot, which will be apart from the other two cots. I'm actually not even going to need this floor just yet. I'm not going to worry about building the floor. I'm going to want to prep the... Oh, and I am out of time. That is the end of the day. So, at the very least, what happens at the end of the day, if we look at the schedule here, it's all work and then a little bit of downtime. This downtime allows them to eat and go to the bathroom, that kind of thing. You can schedule them for more downtime and change their schedules around. Uh, this is particularly useful if you have multiple duplicates that do the same thing. Let's say you had two researchers putting one researcher on the night and one researcher on the day means that they, instead of having two research, you know, benches, you can just have the one. Unfortunately, I didn't really get the cot built, um, so they're going to be sleeping uncomfortably. Now, what I could do, if I really, really, really wanted the cot... Oh boy, you guys should, uh... I am going to attempt to move. No, they're not getting up. Unfortunately, what happened was. Come on. Unfortunately, what happened was they all decided to go to sleep right next to our loud sleeper. And uh, this radius here is going to cause them to have not great sleep. And this is something I'm going to have to fix it for tomorrow. So I'm just fast speeding through the rest of this night. So here's an idea of what it looks like to not have a, uh, a good night's sleep. You're dead tired, which is a, you know, a, a pretty bad uh, negative moodlet. And then a sore back from not actually being on that. And this is something I'm going to work on fixing for uh, tomorrow night. Now, initially, you have a bunch of oxalite that will be pumping out oxygen, and then eventually the oxalite will decay, meaning that your free sources of, uh, of oxygen, you know, uh, go away, I guess. It's the non-scientific uh, way to put it. All right, so now I'm creating a little lip here so that uh, spills are... Actually, I'm going to cancel this. Spills are going to be a little bit harder to um, spread. And I'm even going to go so far as to redesign this ladder because I see this is to be a problem. We'll set it up like this. And that will be a, uh, a much better protected water source. So, the important things here is I get these two remaining cots up and I aim to have it become a bedroom. I will also possibly, um, or a barracks rather, and I'll also possibly set up one who is many with uh, his own bedroom. But I want to get uh, my research started, which means mining out some additional copper, because we're going to need metal for the research bench. At the very start of the game, 
you'll have a lot of muckroot and other sort of low morale meals to exploit. Uh, but eventually what will happen is you will need to start additionally ranching or farming. I just got a new achievement, which would be a bed for everybody. Bed and bath. Yep, there it is. So Dennis Keith and Sign Curve, you now have bedrooms, so you will not have disturbed sleep. And you will not um, have sore backs. As you can see in my oxygen overlay, there's already a buildup of some carbon dioxide in this well that I have built. Totally, totally normal for there to be uh, CO2 buildup. Now, I can build an oxygen diffuser. I don't have the power to power it yet, but the oxygen diffuser is a... Um, is used to generate oxygen, much like oxalate, but it uses algae instead. All right, so now, as you can see, we have a research station that we can build, and I'll set that up. And then I'm also gonna wanna set up a manual generator and a battery. Hook all this up with wires, which all require copper. Now, I've built the manual generator and the research station next to the printing pod because the printing pod is pretty. If we look at the decor overlay, being near the printing pod, it has light, and the pod itself is beautiful, um, so our researcher will benefit from positive morale when working there. Whereas, as you can see, our latrine here is ugly. A lot of that is just the outhouses are ugly, but leaving debris on the ground and stuff like that is also ugly as well. So once we have this research station done, uh, I could change work priorities to make sure that our researcher uh, who is one who is many. Is it though? No, it's uh, sine wave. Yeah, sine wave um, definitely does research as a high priority. Let's also change some priorities around here. Um, doctoring, so Dennis Keith will doctor anyone that's hurt. Uh, decorating, supplying and storing. Digging and building and operating. Okay, now that the research station is built, we run on the manual generator, charging up the battery, which then allows us to use the research station. So, the big question is what do we research first? I would say maybe compost so that we can deal with the uh, the waste produced by the outhouses. And we deliver dirt to the research station. We are researching dirt in order to uh, gain an additional understanding of compost. Now for sine curve, uh, the recharge the battery recharge threshold is about 50%. That's what I've set it at. So we won't bother running on the manual generator unless this battery is below 50%. That's how we have it set up. We have a cool steam vent here that I've found. Um, it admits steam at 230 degrees Fahrenheit. I, uh, I will be probably installing a mod for next episode which shows Celsius as well, not just Fahrenheit, because I realize that Fahrenheit and Celsius are uh, not interchangeable for most people. But that's that's uh, that's sitting at right about boiling, if you are curious. Uh, 230 Fahrenheit is just a little bit higher than boiling. It's about 110 Celsius, so just to put that in perspective. This will be a very handy uh, source of renewable water. On the maps here, uh, in Oxygen Not Included, you have a finite number of resources uh, because the world is is a finite size, but you do have these steam vents that are non-destructible. You can't destroy them or anything, but they will automatically generate more resources. Um, so 
For instance, I have a finite amount of water, except for the fact that this cool steam vent does generate steam, which eventually cools to water, me giving me potentially an infinite amount of water. And there's other um, generators like that too. You can have volcanoes that spew out iron or gold. You, you know, you can have uh, salt water or uh, oxygen or something akin to that. So, a large bit of oxygen not included is, is essentially dealing with. Um, a limited amount of resources, basically resource scarcity, and how you deal with resource scarcity. Alright, so I have not set up a bedroom yet, so that's going to be um, something I'm going to want to do. It's going to look a little strange because obviously this door is, uh, I'll just leave it like that. This door is not going to be usable. I'm, w I'm essentially waiting for this oxalite to decay. But, uh, it's already scheduled downtime. Now, the game is going to warn me that I don't have an oxygen source. Right now, I'm relying on all the oxalite that I have at my disposal available to me. Uh, but eventually, I'm going to need to get a legitimate uh, oxygen source. Uh, probably oxygen diffuser. But, speed up time. Tonight, uh, everybody should be a little bit happier because they have a place to sleep where they won't be disturbed. So as you can see, there is not a designation for a barracks or bedroom here. Not yet. Um, but at least they're on a bed and they're not uh, being disturbed. They won't have a sore back or, or dead tired or any of that. Now, every uh, generated map has some advantages and disadvantages. Um, you don't know what kind of abundant resources that you might get. So some of these maps, you will have an abundant amount of fresh water. Like, I certainly, it looks like I have a lot of fresh water. Um, some maps, you'll have an abundance of iron or copper. I mean, it all differs a little bit here and there. This should be a barracks designation now, and it is, and then I am going to put one who is many's bed on the other side. Okay, so we got the initial research of basic farming. Um, next up, we probably want to push towards non-manual generated um, power, but for that we're going to need advanced research. So that is our next goal. So in the refinement, as you can see here, I've got a composter. Uh, this composter, I'm actually going to... Go even further back. I'm going to set up the composter uh, sort of back here. There. As you can see, this uh, carbon dioxide is almost perfectly trapped. I'm going to have to deal with that later as well. So we've set up our next research. We're getting in uh, a water cooler. So I should set up a, a space for us to use said water cooler. I'm also going to change some priorities ar around uh, toggling. I'm going to set to very high. Life support to very high. And Dennis Keith, your bed is going to be moved over here. You're going to actually have a your own bedroom. My printing pod here is about to be able to print up a new duplicate. Um, I'm going to be very picky about the duplicates I add. Because for each du added duplicate, 
uh, you need to feed them, you need to shelter them, you need to deal with their waste byproduct like carbon dioxide and, you know, uh, stools. <laughs> so adding bad duplicants can be really penalizing. Uh, so you're going to want ones that don't that don't work against you. I guess is the way to put it. All right, so we still have uh, plenty of time on these outhouses to to make sure that we get these composters done. And I have two composters just in case one's full. Uh, we'll be able to get another one. Now, later in the game, uh, one of the things that is very difficult is dealing with heat. It's much, much easier to heat things up than cool things down. And the closer I get to this cool steam vent, as you can see if I check by temperature, even not knowing what, uh, if you're not familiar with Fahrenheit, you can still tell that this is red hot comparatively. Um, we are going to want to be careful with how close we build to this steam vent, uh, because that steam vent does generate considerable heat, and as a result, um, you know, will heat up our, our living space, which means uh, our duplicates could be overheated, or we could also get into a situation where anything that we farm can't yield because it's too hot. So here we go. We've got the first pod print and taking a look at these guys um tidying ranch and cooking so this nails here um has two positive traits the decreased germ resistance isn't terrible the other ones like mouth breather uh obviously the increased air consumption rate very bad that's not one you want the phobias of doing certain work orders is not so bad. Um, however, this character here is not great. We already have a supplier, and we don't need a full-time doctor. Um, so nails would be a pretty good one to pick. Tidying, ranching, cooking. But, yeah, I'll pick nails. Okay, so now nails already has a predetermined name. So let's give Nails a name, Copious Free Time. And we're also going to want to set up another bed. And I'm going to make this the priority. So that we can get them all sleeping. Uh, as you can see, this barracks here, or this bedroom, needs to be a little bit larger. So I will make that larger as well for the larger designation. And one of my dupes, Copious Free Time, started with uh, a skill. So what I'm going to do is give Copious Free Time um, improved strength. This will allow Copious Free Time to carry heavier loads as a supplier. And then let's go over to priorities and make sure that tidying, supplying, and storing are higher than the others. But I'm actually then going to make cooking the highest. So it's good to have someone that is able to cook. Uh, I don't have the capacity to cook just yet, but uh, I am aiming for it. We're almost out of uh, cycle time. So what's going to be important here is to, yep, get that bed. And as you can see now, this is a barracks as well. This is a barracks. So now we are doing downtime, but uh, we have everybody with the morale bonus of barracks. And if you take a look at their morale, the way morale works basically is that for each additional skill that a duplicate l learns, they have a higher expectation for morale. So the more skilled they become, the, the more morale that you have to supply. So eking out morale from 
mess halls, great halls, bedrooms, hospitals, greenhouses, and so on and so forth. It's going to be very, very important for you long term because without that stuff, uh, you will have upset duplicates. So what's going to be important for me is to utilize my water cooler. Uh, the water cooler makes for a good... Um, if you take a look at here, recreation room. That is where my water cooler could come in handy, in use. So as you can see, one who is many cannot disturb the sleep of the others. So I'm going to build a pneumatic door here. Put some down some tile. And plop a water cooler. I can also start um, planning out a dining hall and kitchen and all that good stuff. Uh, which is going to be important later on. Now, up here, as you can see, my cake house, which is the total amount of kilocalories that I have, will be dropping because at the moment I'm not really, uh, I'm not really farming anything. So I can harvest wild plants. The, some of these wild plants, like this millwood, uh, is ready to yield, and it's going to be very important for me to harvest it uh, until I start farming. So this one is ready to be harvested as well. So I'm just trying to expand my ladder systems here, in order, in, basically in order to uh, exploit as much resources, uh, specifically food resources, as I am able. So we, now we have advanced research covered. Uh, this is going to give us an uh, unlock of supercomputer, which allows us to, if you take a look at this research, some are blue, some are, are purple. Um, the blue is done with the basic research, and the purple is done with the uh, supercomputer advanced research. So I think what might be ideal is for us to either work towards sanitation or for us to work towards power. And I'm gonna work towards power right now um, so that we don't have to run on a manual generator every time we want to use um, power. A skill scrubber allows you to reset the skills of a duplicate. Um, it's not something I'm going to need unless I screw up my skill trees. I'm actually going to pivot my research for just a moment down to interior decor so that I can uh, benefit a little bit better from my current construction projects. Now, as you can see, the storage bins that I have are slowly filling up, um, and they will continue to do so, uh, because acquiring resources that you don't immediately need is sort of the name of the game. Now, as we expand our ladder systems and search a little bit further, we are going to find uh, more resources to explore and more biomes. 
Um, so initially you are sort of in a the default generic biome. And as you explore out, you'll find slime biomes, which come with their own challenges. Uh, here's another biome. And all of these different biomes have their own levels of difficulty and their own uh, generally unique resources to exploit. Okay, a little bit of downtime. And as you can see, as I am exploring and exploiting new resources, uh, my KCALs are holding steady. But eventually, I'm going to run out of um, muckroot and the like. So, pivoting towards farming would be would be helpful. Now, in my opinion, um, you don't really want to get into farming before you have some of the other requisite res research. Uh, the other requisite research might be like plumbing and the like. Uh, you do walk on built tiles faster than you do uh, just raw floor. So as you can see, the run speed is 25% faster. Late game, the amount of time that you spend commuting to stuff uh, matters a lot. So it's going to be very, very important for me to try to make the amount of time it takes for my duplicates to run around. Um to be a, a minimum. As you can see here, one who is many has to hold his breath because there is not, uh, there's a dwindling amount of oxygen down here. This is something I do aim to fix. So we just got the interior decor research. Let's go back up and continue for power, coal power. I'm gonna put a flower pot in here which will brighten up this uh, little this little recreation room. And as you can see, my manual generator, I'm going to set to 6, and I'm going to set the research station to 6, so that they prioritize that over... Uh, other stations. I also got a ceiling light, which is useful for farming as well. So as you can see here, we now have a recreation room. Recreation rooms provide some uh, morale bonus when we have scheduled downtime. This here is uh, becoming storage. Now there are some things that you aren't going to want to necessarily store uh, in your general storage, like slime for instance, because we'll get people sick. And my researcher just leveled up. So let's give the researcher advanced research so they research even faster. But I haven't uh, discovered slime yet, so I, I don't need to figure out how to store it. Uh, one who is many just leveled up as well. I'm going to give one who is many hard digging. Being able to dig through um, denser stone, like granite, requires hard digging. As you can see, this little diamond here signifies that you need hard digging level 1. Whereas if I see abyssalite or something like that, uh, it's hard digging level 2. Or super hard digging. Okay. Continuing on. And just a reminder, as they level up, of course, they are going to demand a higher standard of living. So that's another thing that we're going to need to work on. So our suppliers are tidying up. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do? I want to tidy up this area immediately, because this area uh, should be pretty if we can. 
Now we have jumbo batteries, a wire bridge, switches. These are all part of uh, electrical research. Uh, one thing I'm going to want to do is an oxygen diffuser. As you can see, it is becoming increasingly um, carbon dioxide. Now, I don't generating oxygen won't get rid of the carbon dioxide, but it will displace it. So, setting up an oxygen diffuser helps to buy you time. Uh, let's see, Dennis Keith. We'll give you improved carrying. And I'll prioritize the oxygen generator as well. This increases our demand for power. So it's gonna be important for us to work on a smarter power grid as fast as we can. But here we go. Uh, as we deliver algae to this thing, which is a life support task, I'm gonna set this to six. It will pump out oxygen. Now the issue right now is we're just about at max pressure, which means um, that it won't be generating oxygen all the time but just as pressure equalizes. So as you can see, there's um, low pressure over here, low pressure over here, but very high pressure around the core of the base, mostly due to this oxalate outgassing, meaning this oxygen diffuser uh, doesn't work all that efficiently, at least not yet. Now if we check the morale of our guys, as you can see, all of our morale is around five or six, where they all have a morale requirement of one, which means they're gonna be happy. And a happy duplicate is a productive duplicate. And when they become unhappy, uh, well, they all have their own reaction to being unhappy, which is listed in their bio. So, ugly crier and vomiter seems to be our, our negative reactions. Not something that you want to experience. So, the biggest thing right now is my available cake house. I'm going to want to work on getting my power research quickly so that I could then um, deal with my dwindling amount of food that I have available to myself. Um, so I would say the priority right now is the ladders that give me access to additional food. Let me prioritize this as uh, six. So we work on the ladders over some of the other tasks that don't matter quite as much. I'm also going to give cleaning up the debris around the bedrooms a little bit of a higher priority just so that uh, they're, they look a bit nicer. Well, guys, that's about all the time I have for this very first episode. I hope you'd enjoyed it. If you have any feedback for me, do drop me a line in the comments below. Keeping in mind the initial introduction that I had informed all of you of. If you'd like to discuss this, Discord is the place. So Rodamot.com will give you a link to Discord where you can discuss oxygen not included. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all next episode. Adios.